the bottom half of the table, you can see it's still so tight. Just seven points separating Crystal Palace in 12th and Southampton in 20th. The bottom three right now consists of West Ham and Southampton, who played first up this morning at 9 Eastern, and Leicester City, who all of a sudden find themselves not just in the bottom three, but a point away from safety, having played 28 games. Important to point out here that West Ham have only played 26. And then at the top of your screen, look who's in the bottom, bottom half. It's Chelsea. Well, with it being so tight down there, let's take a look at the relegation odds going into today. Odds makers have the Saints as the favourites to go down at minus 360. Forrester next as they're winless in their last seven, followed by Bournemouth at minus 110 despite their win against Fulham yesterday. Everton, Leeds and Leicester are the next three with better odds of staying up. But it is so difficult to call. It is like musical chairs. Where is the music going to stop? At what point? And who will be in that bottom three? So from those five teams that we just watched <coughs> play out their games yesterday, I want to go through and just touch on all five of them and where we stand. Robbie, I'm going to start with you with Leicester. Mm. As I said, all of a sudden found themselves in the bottom three. How and why? Well, the reason why they're there is because the Brennan Rodgers and the team haven't addressed issues that they've had all season. I think they're the third most goals conceded in the Premier League. I think they play with a abandon a, a relaxed nature that they're going for European spot. I don't think they're accepting of their situation um, in the relegation. We've seen that from quotes from players. The manager, very calm in his press conference before this weekend, saying, you know, that we'll find a way and we'll be OK, we've got the quality. I think that's why they're there. And it's a worry for Leicester fans because I don't know whether some of these players are equipped to roll their sleeves up and fight what they've got to do. There's 10 games left for Leicester now. The manager's got to say, OK, we are where we are. We know we've got quality, but we've got to adjust the way that we play to stop conceding goals. They don't change him, though, right? I don't think they change him. There's talk about his contract so high they can't afford to fire him because of the money they have to pay him. OK, they're Midlands rivals, Nottingham yeah. Forest. Steve Cooper was under pressure going into yesterday's yeah. game. I know you frown at that yeah. because he was given a new contract just in October. Is he the right man to lead them until the end of the season? Absolutely. He, he was given a new contract and he was given nearly 30 players. That's an almost impossible task. And I think that um, he'll, he's the person to get the job done. I think they'll limp over the line. Um, and, I, and I do. I think they'll be safe. They, you, know, you talk about home form keeping you up. I mean... The scenes at the Forest Grounds are brilliant. It's a, it's a wonderful place to play. I think the players, more than anything, that Steve Cooper has done, he's installed belief. When I look at some of the other teams, and you, you mentioned Leicester, they're not sure they're in a relegation fight. Nottingham Forest know that. They know that they have to be there, and there's a passion to these players. And there's a bunch of worker bees, and yes, they have Brennan Johnson, and they have Gibbs White, who have been, who've been really good this season in terms of productivity. But ultimately, there's a belief that, that it's important to, for them to stay up and that they're willing to work for it. And that's, for me, the most important thing. So Steve Cooper will get it done. If Forrest go down, yes or no, does Brennan Johnson stay in the Premier League? Yes. OK. Uh, let's talk Bournemouth. What still worries you about them? Even though they won yesterday and they're up to 15. They won yesterday. There's fight in the team. Um, but I still worry about the, the overall quality in the team, Rebecca. And that seems a little harsh, given Marcus Tavernier's goal yesterday, as Tim described. Beautiful goal. And they've got fire in them. They made some spent some money in, in the window. I get that. I just... And there's no awful team in the Premier League this year. Let's say that right out. We talk about all the relegation sides, or most of them here. Um, but I just think that the quality in that squad, there's 10 games left. And also, I've mentioned this before, Rebecca, about an important gauge of a team is the goal difference. They're the worst goal difference team in the league. Mm -hmm. And I know it's all about the points, but as the more games that you play, your goal difference kind of dictates or, or, or indicates what sort of team you are. And they're minus 28 in goal mm -hmm. difference. So I still feel they're going to struggle and I still have them going down. Are you a little surprised they are not adrift right now? Yeah, yeah, I am surprised. And... Uh, Again, they've, they've spent money. The owner we talked about, Rebecca, had said that, you know, we're not going to go down. Like, you can trust me on that. Well, that's not a smart thing to say. And they might avoid it, but uh, I still think they're going to go. OK, let's touch on Wolves. They're in trouble. Lopetegui came in before the World Cup, didn't take yeah. charge until after that World yeah. Cup break. Has he impressed you enough? Has he done enough? Uh, no, but I think it's a really difficult club to do enough. Why? Um, well, the, the way that they recruit players, they, they seem to only basically do it from a certain region in Europe with, with certain agents. Um, and it's almost as if, like, they're just getting the players in. Um, they haven't addressed the striker situation. I mean, you look at Cunha has one goal, uh, Jimenez and Diego Costa zero goals. Those are the strikers. They haven't addressed the striking situation. Um, Molyneux isn't a brilliant place to play. I've been there. They don't, it doesn't inspire this team the way the forest ground does. That's a problem for the players. Ultimately, when I look at it, they've got 28 points. And I think that's the... That, 
point to total will eventually keep them up. They'll add to that, but the fact that they are on 28 points, they feel the safest of those bottom teams for me. It's interesting you say that about Molyneux. It's an old ground. Mm -hmm. It's traditional. It should be a mm -hmm. difficult yeah. place to play for opposition players. Crystal Palace, <clears throat> yesterday's last gasp win. Does that vindicate Steve Parrish and the ball's decision to get rid of Vieira and bring in Hodgson? <sighs> Not yet. Rebecca, um, of course, it's, it's a long way down that, that road. I still believe that Patrick Vieira would have found a way to get the points needed to stay Even up. when you see the way that Palace <clears throat> played yesterday, it was so different. It was so different, absolutely right. With all those shots, with the front foot nature, everybody loves um, Roy Hodgson and the energy that was very apparent, I get that. And there's a strong amount to say that he's totally vindicated, but I just can't go the whole way on one game, given the fact that they've got to get a new staff in the summer, Rebecca. And maybe that's a new opportunity to, to go again somewhere differently. So to fire Vieira and his staff, make this change, yes, short term, it, it looks like it's going to work out great, but they've still got a, a decision to make in the summer, new staff to come in, where the other, the other side would stick with Vieira, he'll find a way, and you've got continuity in the summer. But, but this, that's a great start for sure. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.